What's going on guys? Welcome back to another stimulus update. So I was planning on doing another stimulus update video along with the $400 per week unemployment boost update. However, I decided let's just combine these two because the unemployment video would be so small. It would probably be just a couple of minutes. I didn't want to waste your time. So I'm just going to put both of these together first. Let's dive into the unemployment numbers. Let's dive into the unemployment boost uh, you know, kind of bill so that you understand exactly what is in it. Now, I already addressed this a little bit earlier on today, but I want to go over it one more time so that you guys truly understand what is actually in here. So let's get started. And then I will update you on what is going on with the, the stimulus checks and uh, the stimulus package in general as a whole. So first, the unemployment benefit is supposed to expire on March 14th. However, with this new bill, this $1.9 trillion stimulus package bill or relief bill, this will actually extend the provision through August 29th of 2021. That's gonna provide many more weeks. Things like 24 more weeks. This also means you will have, it will go from 50 weeks to 74 weeks of benefits. This is really good. However, the problem lies in the fact that if you were let go from your job and you have been on unemployment since March 29th of 2020 and even till today, the problem is that if you've been, uh, you will have 74 weeks from that date to August 29th of 2021. But if you were to go on unemployment before March 29th of 2020, then just figure out how many weeks you went on prior to that. And that's how many weeks you will have before August 29th, then your, your benefits will expire at that date. So I just want to bring that up because a lot of people are not talking about that. They're saying, yes, we have a full 74 weeks. However, I know a bunch of people that were let go weeks before March 29th. I even know a handful of people that were let go a month before. So it really just depends when you let go as to how many week, how many more weeks you have of unemployment benefits. Now, we do know that the unemployment programs, all unemployment, all unemployment programs have been extended all the way through March or August 29th of 2021 as well. And there is a provision in here that also includes mixed earners. So if you worked a job plus you worked, let's say some type of self-employment business, you could actually become a mixed earner where you'd get an additional $100 per week on top of the 300 that you're currently getting or on top of the 400 that you could get that there is a provision in this bill for that as well. So that will continue on through March 29th or through August 29th as well. Excuse me. Keep getting those dates mixed up. Now, as far as the $400 per week, a lot of people were asking, is this going to be retroactive? Will we see an additional $100 per week from December 27th all the way for, to March, uh, March 14th? And the answer is no, there's nothing in this bill that says anything about retroactive unemployment benefits. It actually states that it will be, we are going to go from March 14th through August 29th. It actually gives that date. So there's nothing about any retroactive payments. Could they be, could that be added in the future? Could that be added on Monday when the, the house budget committee meets? It could, it could also be added sometime in the Senate. However, at this time, there's no indication that anybody's really even looking at this. There was talks about this about a couple weeks ago. However, at this point, nobody's talking about it. So right now, that pretty much sums up the unemployment benefits. Uh, what is that? Uh, a couple minutes, three minutes. Uh, so yeah, that is pretty much it regarding the $400 per week unemployment benefits. Um, and th it's exactly what we expected. There's, there's going to be some changes. Uh, progressives still want to go from $400 per week all the way up to six. However, that doesn't look likely because this is exactly what President Biden uh, pretty much proposed was $400 per week in unemployment benefits. So right now, I don't see this changing at all. So let's talk about the stimulus package as a whole. Right now, the GOP is doing everything in their power to stop the budget reconciliation bill from actually going through. They're even going as far as trying to get the Senate parliamentarian on their side saying that the $15 federal minimum wage increase doesn't affect the federal budget. And this comes in after the, the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, is stating that, and they stated this last week was, yes, 
this does affect the federal budget because it actually hurts the economy more than it helps us in the short term. So it does affect the federal budget. And the GOP even goes as far as uh, talking about the $1,400 stimulus checks. Why do we need to provide it to people that make X amount of dollars, you know, $150,000, $200,000? And then they even talk about why we need to go as far as boosting the child tax credits at this time. But honestly, this whole thing looks like it's going to go through. There's very little that the GOP can do. They can provide some delays, but the delays are only going to last so long. Some are expecting we could potentially see the GOP uh, create a delay that lasts maybe an additional week. But outside of that, there's really nothing they can do. We know that the CBO is saying that the $15 minimum wage increase is going to bring roughly 900,000 people out of poverty. And that's really good. And this would actually save the government money. So this does affect the federal budget because it saves the government money because there'd be less funds for things like, or there would be less funds needed for things like SNAP benefits and housing. However, they can take these funds and reallocate this money to something else. So again, it affects the federal budget. But at the same time, the wage increase will will probably do, or make businesses uh, lay off roughly 1.4 million people from their jobs. So the CBO is saying that this does affect the federal budget as well because by having 1.4 million people laid off or let go because of this increase in, in uh in payroll, what's going to happen is all these people are going to go on the unemployment, uh, go on to unemployment. And when this happens, this is going to increase the cost of unemployment insurance benefits to all these people. And it would increase the cost of the federal government, which means this does affect the budget or the federal budget. So as of right now, the provision for $15 uh, minimum wage increase is going to impact the federal budget. And this means that Bernie Sanders is right. He's 100% confident that this bill will pass with the $15 federal minimum wage increase included. He even went on to say, and I quote, I'm confident that the parliamentarian will advise next week that we can raise the minimum wage through the reconciliation process. So he's had a very, uh, very firm stance on the fact that yes, this can be included. All of his staff have been saying the exact same thing. However, some people say that no, this can't. But you really gotta listen to who you're, or you're, think about who you're listening to, 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 to this from because the problem is you think about, okay, Republican, they're going to say whatever they want just because they do not want to see this pass. A Democrat, they're going to say pretty much the exact opposite because they want to see it pass. So you got to understand there's two sides to this, but until the Senate parliamentarian actually speaks, hopefully next week, possibly even the week after, that is the true uh, indication as to whether or not we will see this pass. As of right now, what we do know is that Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema do not want to see a $15 federal minimum wage. However, there are uh, current reports stating that these two have been in discussions with uh, senior Democrats as well, trying to get them on board. So we will see what happens there. There's not been a lot of talks from Joe Manchin or Kirsten Cinema uh, lately, but hopefully we'll get some answers this week. So Right now, what we know is that the GOP is trying to do whatever they can to stop this $1.9 trillion stimulus package from actually getting passed and going through. And it's not because they don't want to see the American people or the economy uh, get this relief. According to a few senators, the GOP wants to see stimulus go to targeted areas and individuals so that we don't overinflate the economy in a short term and cause a massive bubble to pop. That's what uh, a few senators are saying. One representative even said that providing this much stimulus to the economy is only making the lower income earners reliant on the government for help. But what happens when the Biden administration stops providing this help and all these people are struggling once again? I can, you can probably guess what side this representative is on. Are they a Republican or a Democrat? I'll tell you right now, if you didn't know, they are Republican. All these are from Republicans. So what we know is that yes, many, uh, many people are gonna be somewhat reliant on this help, but at the same time, that's kind of what needs to happen at this point. Now, wh whether or not this, this help gets faded away or it just cuts off like the $400 per week unemployment boost, you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens there. 
But right now, many high profile economists are even saying that the government is doing too much. And with this $1.9 trillion package uh, that they would support additional stimulus, obviously, but it must be more targeted than this current package is. So we know there's going to be a fight that continues on for the next couple of weeks, probably even the next few weeks regarding this stimulus package. But will anything actually change because of it? Right now, some people say no, that Democrats are going to push forward no matter what. Democrats do not care what Republicans really want or any of their priorities are. Democrats are going to push and they are banking on this $1.9 trillion stimulus package to actually work. If this doesn't work for whatever reason, here's the other thing that we're hearing. Many experts predict that President Biden, if this package doesn't work, let's say it's, it's too big and it's not targeted enough, and it actually does what uh, you know some senators are saying, saying that uh, it's going to provide too much stimulus to the economy and it's going to cause a massive bubble to pop. If this happens, President Biden's going to be on the hook. If we see the exact opposite and it's not enough stimulus to actually prop up the economy, keep people, you know, keep some uh, income coming into their pockets, into their bank accounts, then many experts are saying that President Biden will follow in former President Donald Trump's footsteps and he will also be a one term president. So we will see what happens. But all we can do right now is pretty much sit back and watch and see what unfolds. So. As of always, as I know more, I promise I'll share more. Consider subscribing so I can continue to keep you updated on everything that's going on. And I'll see you guys on the next one.